Hi, it's Maxine. If you could only see my setup right now, it's incredibly impressive. <laughs> I'm just like thinking, okay, what can I use to prop my phone up? And I look around and I see this basket that I'm using for like salt and pepper <laughs> and bananas and stuff and then I look over at my window and there's this like latch emergency latch like and I hang it off of that with the like plastic I don't know what you call it like t to hang tags off of items anyways <laughs> no one came to this video for that <laughs> so <laughs> Today I want to do another Jubilee Spectrum video, um, well, like using their questions, but I want to mention their name every time I do these questions because I want to give credit to the site, like to the um, channel who's making these videos because I really like their videos. I like that they're opening important conversations to everything from mental health to politics to you know like bo body positivity and more so this one is do all people with mental illness think the same so with my mental illness i guess you could classify that with like having battle depression anxiety um eating disorders and OCD, CPTSD, so trauma response, triggers. Um, it's not mental illness, but when you're autistic, um, a lot of autistic people tend to have like comorbid, as they say, with another type of um, disability or another type of uh, um, diagnosis so yes I'm gonna try to make this video short today <laughs> I say that every time and then it ends up being a long video but um, I'm just gonna stick to the point today and I was supposed to do my next video about food sensitivities and then the one after that I want to do my surgery but um, I'll do that next time. Today I'm just going to do this video. So the first, there's six questions. The questions are mental health was discussed, or it's more of a statement and then you have to go strongly agree, somewhat agree, neutral, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree. So the first question is mental health was discussed in my home growing up. Yes and no, I think like mental health or conditions or like it was more so like very negative and name calling, not ever like never any sort of advice or positive reinforcement, just constantly shaming us for who we were and um So, yeah, the mental health aspect was never going to be there. And the funny thing is, I was just thinking the other day, something that's always bothered me is, um, well, my dad was extremely, like, an extremely angry person. Like, he had an abusive childhood as well, but he was an addict, and, like, it was hard to always, like, um, blame him for the way he was, like, we made excuses for his behavior all the time about his childhood, but what he did was just as bad um, and continued the cycle of abuse. So, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble focusing today. And I'm also, when I do my videos at home, I have a lot harder of a time because of my pets being around. As much as I love them, they just, make my ADHD brain like more reactive 
so anyway, uh, oh, what I was saying, well, it's not funny, but, um, my dad was a very angry person and, um, you know, we were, me and my sibling were like met with so much different forms of abuse and neglect and stuff. By the time we were teenagers, we were just, yeah, angry. We were pissed off. We were somewhat rebellious. We, you know, sort of had more of like a punk alternative type of aesthetic and listened to like, you know, I had some heavier music. I like all kinds of music, but I started listening to Slipknot and things and that type of music like really just was a great outlet because I felt like I was just very angry and I could have like headed down a completely different direction with my life and thankfully listening to their music just was the outlet I needed to like release that anger inside because thank god I like could have definitely become a completely different person <laughs> if it wasn't for different outlets that I had and some some friends and things but anyway um oh back to I keep saying I never get to the point the funny part is that my parents had the nerve to put me and my sibling in anger management I think we only went to like two different it was like uh, group sessions with other teenagers and stuff and they're talking about like all these violent actions that we would that they would take and I'm just like you know, they're like, so what do you do when you're mad? And I'm like, um, I just made something up, like punched my pillow. Like I honestly didn't do like, I was never physically violent with like my sibling. I d wasn't violent towards anyone in the household. Like I didn't do things that like, I didn't damage things. It was more just my attitude based on solely on what was going on in the home and how no one else was taking accountability, like the adults in the situation. And they had the nerve to put us in anger management, like absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, Rainy, she must have farted. Oh my God, she probably has to poop. So after this video, I gotta go take them. So next is, um, yeah, so as for mental health was, so I guess I'm completely neutral. Like it was discussed, but never in a positive light, never in like a helpful healing way. Just always like, you know, almost like diagnosing me and shaming me and just putting me down. And my dad would say things like, you're not a people person just because I didn't like how he was. Like, out in the world, I was babysitting, taking care of kids. I had jobs where I was interacting with people. I had lots of friends. And I had, like, way better relationships than he ever had in his life. And for him to just say that I'm not a people person, like, he would just do anything to try to, like, make me out to be him or worse. So, anyway, next is people are surprised to find out I have mental illness. <laughs> I think that, um, well, when I'm not doing these videos, like, because I had to mask for so long in my life just to survive, just to make it in different careers, work, school, in relationships and social settings, um... I think that I'm pretty good like at like right now I'm mad because anytime I like bring up my childhood it like puts me in this mindset that's hard to get out of it's hard to just like I don't want a mask anymore so I don't want to just be like act like that doesn't bother me and go on to the next question like people are surprised to find out I have mental illness like <sighs> it's not natural and for anyone, but especially for autistic people, we have a lot harder of a time hiding how we feel. So anyway, um, I think that, you know, some, there has been times where I've met people and I say I'm autistic and immediately they're like, well, you don't seem autistic or they try to say it in a positive way where it's like, well, 
like, sorry, that's not complimenting. That's just denying my existence or like, it's not really a compliment to be like, you don't seem like it. Like it's a huge spectrum and you have no idea what I struggle with in my life. So anyway, um, I think I can fool people for a little bit by masking and then eventually they realize pretty quickly on that um, something is different about me and then uh, like beyond autism because that's not exactly mental illness it's like a um, I don't even know what the classification is but it's not like a it's a permanent disability that you're born with. It's not like mental illness, is it? I don't know. Um, but another thing too is I'm also very honest with people and open when they get to know me. I'm, I share a lot of my life and so because I just don't want there to be shame anymore in it, I want, I think more and more like people are becoming more open about themselves and what they struggle with so others don't feel alone and so I'm pretty open when I talk to people and so whether they figure it out or not for themselves I will tell them kind of like what some people said in this video that I watched they said that they tend to tell people <laughs> and uh, I think the reason I overshare that a lot more these days is because I just want to quickly be like Okay, well, before you judge me, um, I'm autistic, or <laughs> I have ADHD, or I have fibromyalgia, I'm not just fat, I'm, like, suffering, and it's hard to get the motivation to be active. It's hard to eat right when you feel like shit, because you are using that to, like, help cope with it. And I have to pause this video, because somebody's outside my window <sighs> sorry one thing I'm going through lately is being a target of bullying story of my life <laughs> like no matter what setting I'm in whether it's like work or school or just life or like where I live and neighbors it's just like never freaking ending and it's real it's not like in my head or a fantasy or made up it's like I could tell you things you just wouldn't believe but I can't talk discuss that right this moment in these videos so anyway um next is I trust medical professionals yes and no I know there are amazing people out there who are doing good and they want to help people and I'm sure that's all what a lot of them set out to do in the beginning and some it's just for money but a lot of them do want to help people but I feel like a lot of them have a difference of opinion like not every doctor is going to have the exact same opinion not every psychologist not every psychiatrist not every you know like everyone has their own methods and they do get the same education but I guess when it comes to after schooling and what they just decide to focus their profession on and then continuing education like pe I don't know like but a lot of the time I'll just say that really maybe even beyond education it's not so much about that it's just their own personal opinion like how they treat people if they have their own judgments that they can't get over whether like they treat people who are disabled differently or they treat people who are obese differently or they treat people who are like whatever it may be if you're not following the same religious values that they have or something so I've just had a lot of horrible experiences that I'm planning to address some in my videos and so when it comes to trusting them, <laughs> um, neutral again, because I've had great experiences and I've had really horrible experiences and I can't, I wish I could say strongly agree or I wish I could say mostly agree, but I can't say that right now. All I can say is, uh, 
neutral. So next is self-diagnosis is dangerous and invalid. I think that, um, I think it could be like, I try to understand what people are saying about, oh, something becoming a fad, like autism, for example, and I have a hard time with that because it's like, I think the fad of it did make me realize that it was actually what I was suffering with. And like me being autistic and having ADHD is like completely undeniable. Like doctors always used to ask me all the time, do you have special interests? And I would always say, no, not really. Like I didn't even know what that question was. I didn't know that that question was even related to autism. And it turns out I have a lot of special interests, but because I had such low self-esteem and I came from an abusive environment I and because I was like kind of forced to work at a young age and I couldn't really get into a lot of my special interests like I still do have them and I have many and like one of them being collections which tends to be like an autistic type of um special interest but I, that's not something I would ever bring up at the doctors because I just had no idea I mean, I'm sure they could have asked me a lot of other questions, but it seemed like any time I said no to that, they immediately would carry on to something else. <laughs> or maybe they just didn't want to tell me for some reason. I did have a friend who was highly educated and she told me that doctors won't tell you certain diagnoses if they think it's going to affect your mental health. So I don't know if that's true it's super fucked up I hope it's not true but because she's such was such like an accomplished um highly intelligent educated person I do somewhat believe it and it's scary but um back to self-diagnosis so I think as long as it's not used to take to not take accountability I wrote myself a little note or to not make effort to get help. Like sometimes, the, obviously there's certain illnesses, it's out of your control. Like the reason you're struggling is like, not just an impulse, but sometimes it's just a reaction. Like when I have a panic attack, I can't just snap my fingers and, and I didn't even know that's what it was called before, but like, you know, crying to the point where you're almost like you can't breathe and Actually, you know what, I don't even know the difference between a panic attack and anxiety attack, but one of those. <laughs> and um, so, but on the other hand, so if it's used to not take accountability or if it's just used to never make an effort, like saying, well, that's just who I am. I mean, there is some validation to that point but on the other hand um what is so wrong if people say they are like 80 percent of the way to being autistic or 80 percent of the way to being having adhd and just learning about themselves and how they can help themselves and how they can help themselves in different situations like and in interacting with others or possibly reaching out for help or therapy like as long as it's used for positivity anybody like whether you're neurodivergent or not like a lot of people can value from therapy a lot of people can value from group therapy um so i think it only becomes dangerous as if people are only taking little bits and pieces of something and saying, oh, well, yes, that's like me, or, and, but I just, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think of how it's possibly dangerous. It's obviously dangerous in some way that I'm not recognizing, but Yeah, um, okay, so one of the questions in the video was, uh, her doctor wouldn't diagnose her with an eating disorder because she wasn't skinny enough yet, 
for example. Oh, if you were skinnier, then it would be a problem. No, it's the action of restricting, purging, maybe binging, purging, the guilt, the shame, like, doesn't matter what size you're at. You can be morbidly obese if you're like me and I was bulimic for like on and off for 20 years. Like that's still bulimic whether I was stick thin or not. Like you either, if you're not doing it, then you're not bulimic. If you're doing it, you are bulimic. It doesn't matter what weight you're at. Like the goal is to try to get skinnier. Thankfully, I talk myself out of it at times, but I did that literally from when I had my very first extreme weight loss in the ninth grade from you know, 230 pounds to 160 and from an extreme diet and then anytime I would like overeat or eat something that wasn't in my diet I felt so much guilt that I started puking so and no it wasn't a daily thing no it wasn't every meal thank goodness but it was still something that I did on and off for 20 years. That's a long time. And, you know, it was a full blown eating disorder because like, like say I'd starve all day and then I'd eat almost my holy, my, like my daily calories and like one single meal in the evening, like, like yay maybe that prevented me from getting diabetes because I was like my not keeping my blood sugar high all day but it still is part anorexia when you're going all day long not eating because you're too ashamed to eat in front of people and you're embarrassed and everyone calls you fat so you don't want to eat in front of people because you don't you want to prove to them that you're not just overeating all the time like they think which some people are just bigger and they're they don't have like at that point even though I was eating healthier I was active biking walking everywhere I was still left with like loose skin and stuff where it's like I had mom arms or like the body of someone who already carried a child and I don't shame those bodies, but I shamed myself because I was so young and I wanted to be like everyone else, but that was just never going to happen. Once you get to that point and you return, like some people's bodies can snap back, but some can't. And probably for someone like me who possibly has EDS, I do a fibromyalgia, but I did another video about how it's, it's actually seems like a lot more like EDS, which is common with autistic people. I think the reason I didn't snap back as well is because of the like um, connective tissue disorder that I have. So anyway, um, the next, <laughs> this video is very sad today, but this is mental illness and it's not all, <laughs> what portion of it is supposed to be fun. I mean, it makes us who we are, it makes us creative, it makes us empty empathetic at times depending what you have um, but it is sad too we miss out on a lot in life we we live shorter lives shorter lifespans statistically we're yeah we struggle in a lot of ways so next is therapy and medication works for me um, I've done this before where I've talked about where I don't take medication. Um, thankfully, I just, like I've said before, I really have not been severely depressed since like 2016, maybe into 2017. But then I started my home daycare in 2017 and I was honestly just like the happiest I had ever been in my life. And I lived in this beautiful home and I had my dogs and my daycare and I was just like I felt like I had a purpose and everything was awesome then the pandemic hit maybe I was a bit depressed again around that point but um, I still have always been able to find a way to push through hello 
I'm running out of time, so I'm running out of room is what I meant. I don't recommend anybody to go against the doctor's personal advice and to not be on medication, it, like to each their own though. Like I've been offered all kinds of things when I wasn't really a harm to myself or others. Like maybe in the past, yes, with everything I'm sharing, being depressed, having eating disorders, but without medication and having like therapy at times in my life, I feel like I've been able to manage my health and my mental health and physical and there's things that I can do to better my health like not drinking not doing drugs not engaging in relationships that bring you down and people that treat you like crap or take advantage of you going to bed early getting physical like exercise going eating healthy like there's a million things that I choose to do besides take medication and it's not easy <laughs> like it's easier to not do the things and just to do what you want to like or personally I want to do those things because I want to live a long life but I still engage in things like overeating at times and sugar that like very well could kill me like and give me diabetes and so I'm not perfect, but I'm just doing my best. <laughs> and so I'll have to say neutral because I don't know if it exactly works for me. Like I've taken a couple things in my life and the side effects to me, like making me feel nauseous off the bat instantly. I'm like, no, I'm not willing to <laughs> take this for fear of um, complications and side effects. I'm like, well, I'm going to be trading depression for what stomach pain and feeling nauseous or I know that's not giving it a chance, but I'm very thankful that I've been resistance resistant against it because I feel like there very well could be a time in the future where I need to take something due to my chronic pain, whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to take it because it has been really bad and I just just barely get through life <laughs> sometimes but also with finding out my food sensitivities and um yeah just taking care of myself has helped with that so um I'm not telling anyone else to do that I'm just speaking personally from my experience the last question is, I wish I didn't have mental illness. <laughs> well, I said like in the other video about I wish I wasn't autistic. Um, that was one of the prompts or one of the statements. And I said, well, you know, like we do struggle in a lot of ways or I struggle in a lot of ways, but i happy that I have that because it made me who, who I am. In this case, it's like, I don't know because uh, in this case I don't know um, like more of my mental illness I think is brought on from having CPTSD and having a traumatic childhood so I wish I didn't have that like I wish I didn't have those experiences yes it made me a stronger person in some ways but it also did make me weak like that quote that's out there like it nearly f killed me like literally almost killed me I was you know, like I am surprised sometimes that I'm even here and I don't say that in like a in like a cliche kind of way it's just like a literal way of like all the things I've experienced in my life I'm like really thankful to be here and I know we all go through things, but um, some of us go through more. <laughs> and it's not a comparison. It's not a competition. It's not. We all struggle at times, but some of us just simply go through more. And we go through it alone because we don't have a strong support system. Some people have big families where even though, you know, you might not like some of your family and you might disagree or whatever. And you go through this and go through that in life and in and out of the home, in and out of like your family um 
a lot of people have support by having big families and I think that's the, one of the reasons why so many people are depressed today is because they don't have that support they don't have someone to really talk to they don't have people who like love them unconditionally the way that your family would and when you grow up being somebody who doesn't even have your own mom and dad who are supposed to be like the number one and two people who are gonna like love you unconditionally because they are supposed to be your parents like if you don't even have that you basically have nothing because I mean grandparents like aunties uncles cousins some of them do take on the role of being like your parent or even more so and are supportive but um I just think a lot of the time like nothing should compare to the love of your mom and dad and if you don't even have that life is really hard and I'm not saying my mom doesn't love me it's just a very complicated relationship and my dad put me and my mom against each other because he was manipulative and abusive and he wanted my mom to be against me because I was against my dad and his actions such as his addictions and cheating on my mom and put, putting us all down and uh, the abuse and there was sexual abuse as well. <sighs> so yeah, I wish I didn't have those experiences to the point that I have mental illness, but here we are and all I can do is um, use what I have for positive in the future and to try to help others. So that's what I'm basically doing with my videos. And my arm's getting sore. <laughs> and the phone is shaking all around. I need to get something to like actually put my phone on something. <laughs> anyway, um, God, my phone is just really bothering me. It's like every second there's a notification, there's um, an alarm that goes off or it dies or it says I run out of room and then it's just telling me I'm at 10% battery or something now. What's next? But I'm ending my video now. My makeup got kind of messy. I was out gardening. <laughs> um, so I wish I didn't have my mental illness. I think some would agree. Not fully because I'm happy that I'm I'm still here today and I'm hoping to help others. So and one of the ways we can help others is just by sharing our stories and having people relate and realizing that they're not alone and I know sometimes sharing can be triggering and talking about things too much to a point can be almost harmful because but on some days, it really helps to talk about it for me. It helps me to get it off my chest. It feels like a release, like a release of energy, a release of emotional, like just tension and anger and sadness. And so, yeah, I hope my videos can help people and Next time, well, you will be doing food sensitivities, and the time after that, I'm going to do um, my surgery that nearly killed me. Not even exaggerating. Okay, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share your experience, and have a good day.